Hello, and it's hard to believe that we're already through module six and that there's only one more module to go. And so just a reminder to lay out the rest of this course, the week of Thanksgiving, there will be one homework assignment due, which is due that Sunday, November 30th at 1159. And so that'll, that'll be the last Connect homework assignment that is due. And uh, during the first week of December is when we'll have uh, the final exam for this course. As a reminder, the final exam is not cumulative. It's just going to cover modules five, six, and seven. And I will send out a study guide and some more details around the exam, probably the next few days, week or so. Um, so, so look for that in your email. Uh, there will be one more discussion board assignment that is due that first week of December. There will not be a response post, so you'll just uh, be asked to, to, to respond to one post or to make one initial post. And as far as Module 6, there's an uh, assignment that is due on uh, Wednesday at 11.19 to make your initial discussion board post uh, followed by the response. So if you have any questions about the exam or, or how this course is progressing, your grade, etc., uh, feel free again to reach out to email or call me. Quite a few of you uh, have taken advantage of this. I haven't heard from everyone, which is fine. If this is an online class, if you're getting all that you need uh, and you don't need to communicate with me, that, that's okay. Um, but certainly uh, do take advantage of, of my of the time to, to have a phone call or do a, a video conference or email. I'm more than happy to do that. I want to make sure that you're successful. Um, as a reminder, I've, I've gotten quite a bit of feedback about the Learn Smart modules, which are those flashcards that help you review the concepts and give you more practice at doing some problems. Uh, and the feedback has been very positive. So if you haven't taken a look at that, um, I highly recommend you do it. There's a, a link on the left-hand side of Blackboard called Learn Smart. And from there, you can click on those links. And again, they're just a, a way to review and practice the concepts that you've learned. I'm not requiring it for a grade. Uh, but I think as you um, start to study some of these concepts, in particular in, in preparation for the final exam, I think it can be a, a very helpful way to reinforce the concepts that we've uh, learned. So let me give a couple comments on board module five's posts. And this is where I ask you to, to pick a particular product and look at the change over time in, its product, in, a, in the pricing of the product. And also compare how that product's pricing changed relative to CPI and then relative to uh, PPI as well. Several of you uh, posted the, the price of a technological product. Uh, so I think Melissa Myers and Nathan Thomas, uh, a, lot of, a lot of you posted either um, an Apple iPhone or Samsung Galaxy and made the observation that the, the prices of those products dropped quite a bit over a year period. And that can be due to, to really several reasons. One is that the cost of the components that go into the phones fall uh, pretty quickly. So the fabrication process uh, for a new microprocessor that goes in the cell phone might be really expensive at first, but once that factory is up and running and once the, the expertise is, has been developed on, on fabricating the microprocessor, the cost of the components drop uh, relatively quickly. Same thing with uh, um, you know, the display screens, the memory, all those components can drop pretty quickly. Um, so, so one thing that other people made the observation of is, you know, you need to distinguish between changes in inflation due to perhaps um, uh, changes in the monetary supply um, versus changes in inflation or changes in prices due to um, shifts in demand. So a lot of people made the, the observation that um, one of the reasons why the iPhone's price has fallen so much is that demand has actually shifted towards other products. Um, and so for a while, the iPhone was the dominant smartphone. And over the last uh, two or three years, um, Apple has uh, not made a large uh, phone for, 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 the, for the market. Um, and it's only been in the last couple of months that they actually released, um, you know, the larger iPhone sizes. I think, a, you know, a 4.7 inch screen and a 5.5 and a inch screen to make sure that they compete with, um, you know, the other smartphone makers like Samsung who are producing those, those larger phones like the Note and the Galaxy. Um, so one thing to distinguish is uh, making sure that the, the rise in prices, um, uh, if you're a manager, might be due to a shift in demand. Uh, it might be due to the components costs. Uh, you know, you really want to make sure that uh, you understand the reasons for the, the shifts in the prices. Um, I, I think someone else had made the comment about plane tickets and how they've seen plane tickets fluctuate so much um, uh, because of price competition with other carriers because of the cost of fuel. Um, and I think one, one person, Tian Lan Yang, you know, made the observation that if you're a manager, 
for a for a, um, um, a an air carrier that you know you're probably not paying as much attention to CPI as you are just the underlying cost of gas and then the market structure in which you operate. Uh, so I thought that was a, a pretty astute observation. Um, several of you, uh, you did use the example of UC tuition and how the price of UC tuition has, has really increased dramatically. If you look at over a 10, 20 year period, uh, the cost of, of textbooks, the cost of um, tuition and fees, all those things have gone up incredibly over time. And I think the key takeaway from, from this module, module five, when you, when you talk about um, measuring GDP and inflation, the key thing to take away from inflation is that there's not one measure of inflation. And so you'll hear people talk about, well, CPI um, is, is up year over year. And so the inflation rate is based on CPI is, is increasing by 2%. And that's important for a lot of uh, figures and a lot of industries. Uh, the CPI is important for the government because a lot of their benefits are indexed to the CPI. Um, so things like uh, Social Security, um, and other benefits might be indexed to CPI. That is to say, as um, CPI goes up by 2%, the, the recipient of a Social Security benefits will receive a 2% higher amount. Um, but, but CPI is, is this basket, if you recall, it's a basket of 80,000 uh, different goods that a consumer uh, will purchase. And the problem is every consumer is different. Everyone in this class, everyone watching this video uh, doesn't purchase the same amount of things. And so right now, for example, tuition makes up a large component of, of probably many of your all's um, expenditures in a given year, uh, unless your employer is reimbursing you. Um, and, and so for you, while CPI might have gone up 2%, if your textbooks have gone up by 10%, and if your tuition's gone up by another 6%, uh, you know, your spending power, your purchasing power of your dollars that you earn is, is quite a bit lower than it otherwise would have if you were just looking at the CPI. Um, so things like healthcare have gone up quite a bit over the last 10 years. So if you're elderly and you're going back to school, uh, you know, it's sort of a double whammy and that you're really getting hit by these higher prices versus right now gas prices are falling. Several of you mentioned that the price of gasoline has, has dropped uh, actually pretty dramatically in the last uh, two to four weeks. Uh, now gasoline here in the Cincinnati area, um, you can get it for well under three dollars a gallon. And so if you're um, a person who drives a lot, maybe you have a really long distance commute, then all of a sudden, um, you know, this drop in gas prices has made a, a maybe a pretty dramatic increase in, in your purchasing power. And so if, if you break out the, uh, the, the expenditures that you have on a on monthly or annual basis and think about, uh, you know, how much are you spending on health care? How much are you spending on maybe daycare? How much are you spending on uh, gasoline prices? So every person is unique, and if you're a manager, you want to pay really uh, close attention to those products and and, um, and inputs that drive your market. And so if you are an air carrier, you really do want to pay attention to the price of gasoline because if that influences uh, one, one of your main cost drivers, which is you know fuel, uh, then that's going to have a, a pretty significant impact on your business. So when you hear the news uh, that CPI has been going up and down, uh, it's great. It's, a, it's, a, it's certainly a, a strong barometer of how inflation is tracking in the U.S., but just make sure that, uh, you know, as a manager in your firm, that if, if you're in a position where you're making those purchasing decisions that, uh, you know, you, or you're making contracts, for example, with a labor union, because uh, a lot of times uh, when you're making a, a contract with a labor union, there's discussion about what the salary increase is going to be over the next three to five years, um, the, the premiums for health care. So if you're in a situation where you're negotiating with the labor union or you're negotiating with vendors in your supply chain, you know, really understand what the cost drivers and what inflation is looking like in those markets, rather than just looking at you know, some other all, overall measure of um, inflation, uh, like the CPI. Okay, so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, module. Uh, in module six, we're going to talk more about unemployment, aggregate demand, aggregate supply. If you have any questions, again, I uh, really want to help you all uh, be successful in this class. Feel free to reach out to me. But otherwise, I uh, certainly hope you have a good Thanksgiving holiday. You'll probably hear from me one more time uh, before break. And um, uh, have a great day.